Like, what if we superpowered a Huacha? Because they reload now, right? So wouldn't it just be a constant stream of arrows? <laughs> oh my god, this puts Artemis to shame! Look at all the arrows! <laughs> it's gonna crash my game! What's up guys and welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. And to start off today's episode, I thought why don't we track down the rest of the secret units. Now last time we managed to find the Sensei, the Shogun, and the Samurai Giant, which means there's still six more left that I haven't unlocked, but I have found. Apparently the nine new secret units that they added to the game weren't all from the Dynasty faction. They're actually spread across all of the maps, so you might not be able to see what I see right now, because you would have no reason to be looking for it, but this weird little Muppet skull right here is in fact a weapon. And I don't know what kind of primitive unit we're gonna unlock with this. We have unlocked the cheerleader. What? I guess they're spread across all of the maps, but don't necessarily have anything to do with that map or that faction of units. Like right now, we're on the farmer's map, and yet we're gonna unlock some kind of creepy blinking dragon? Don't we already have the dragon? It came with the dynasty faction. The wheelbarrow dragon! Oh god, we did not need more wheelbarrow units. Some of these are really well hidden. It's like you're playing Where's Waldo, except instead of looking for Waldo, you have no idea what you're looking for. But in other cases, they actually do a pretty good job indicating where something might be. They put the Landfall logo over it, or they make it kind of look a little different, and it lets us track down the teacher. Ooh, that's a different one. Okay, I'm guessing that's probably from the Renaissance faction. That's not released yet, but it looks very Renaissance. I honestly didn't even know a lot of these maps existed. Like we've been playing through the campaign so much and every time I go to the sandbox, I just go to the regular levels, but there are sandbox exclusive levels that are really big and intricate and hiding weapons. So we do need to go to the sandbox every now and then. We can't unlock everything in the campaign. And this time around, we have either the hat from Emperor's New Groove, or some kind of ancient... ...ban? Okay. We have a fan bearer. Are we gonna assault the enemy with a stiff breeze? Now if you're like me, you probably see this map and think, okay, secret unit. Maybe it has something to do with the barrels floating in the water? Or the giant sealed door hidden in a cavern underneath the map? Or maybe the gravestones? Or any of the other little intricate things all over the place? But no, apparently it's a tree. The weapon is one random tree. There it is. Okay, I wasn't sure if this was the right tree. There's a lot of trees on this map. <laughs> the tree giant. Ooh, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen in this game. I really want to try that out. I was about to say, what kind of weapon is a tree? Last, but certainly not least, we have what is quite possibly the weirdest weapon I've seen yet. It looks like a severed head, right? It's just a, a giant blue body? Right, it looks like it's attached to something underneath the ice. <laughs> the ice giant! I cannot wait to make a giant army. No mods, actual giants. We know that the samurai giant does a bunch of weird backflips to crush units underneath him. I would imagine that the tree giant hits people with trees. It's kind of self-explanatory. But what do you think the ice giant does? Other than copious amounts of steroids. <laughs> Look at this guy! What a beefcake! What's his size compared to a mammoth? Okay, so he's like two full heads taller than a mammoth. Costs three times as much though, so let's have him face off against three mammoths. He's outnumbered, he's outvalued, but maybe he can put up a decent fight. <gasps> oh, he punches! Okay. So he just swings his giant meaty fists and clobbers a mammoth or two. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> He's gotta really land a firm blow. Okay, um, 
I guess you could just hit a mammoth into a different area code if you really want to. Oh, wow, I need to use you against small units. And by small units, I mean the smallest unit. What if we get an entire army of halflings in there to do their thing? Their thing being jumping at his knees and getting crushed, I would imagine Jesus. <laughs> you guys can only hop into his asshole Ant-Man style so many times before he gets pissed off. This is a game changer to say the least. I like the fact that he has shields on his hips too. I'm curious if they can block projectiles. If you need to test out somebody getting shot, Artemis is definitely the lady you want to call. Plus, they're pretty similar in value. Both incredibly powerful secret units. Oh, you got a good grouping there on his tummy, Artemis, but you might want to watch out. He is pissed. <gasps> Holy crap. I can already hear people in the future just yelling into the comments for this. So we'll stop blue balling you already. Why don't we do a giant match off? We'll have the tree giant versus the ice giant. The tree giant isn't nearly as gigantic. He kind of looks like a cross between Jesus and a hippie, and he's just gonna whack people with his broccoli staff. Something tells me that's not gonna help a whole lot against getting smashed in the nuts by an ice golem. Oh God. That wasn't even kind of fair. You know what? The tree giant deserves better than that. Okay, we're gonna bring him to an area that's a little bit more suited for his weaponry needs and have him face off against an army of farmers. Something that won't put up too much of a fight, but just enough of a fight that we can see what they're capable of. I'm really, really curious what they're gonna do against tiny units. Okay, then. So there's a reason they cost 4,000, or when they're facing off against the biggest, strongest, most expensive unit in the game, and they look like crap, but they'll dismantle a unit like they're playing the front nine on a golf course. <laughs> don't whack each other, idiots. It's understandable that they don't really know how to cooperate all that well. I mean, how often are you gonna have multiple tree giants in an army? Unless that army is facing off against a samurai giant army. Why don't we have them 5v4? That way the price is pretty similar. I don't know if the samurai giant is very good against fellow giants. Because normally they would do their backflips, but they don't here. They only do it against crowds. Against other giants, they do just swing their swords. And for some reason, a tree is a lot more effective than a sword right now. It's literally a hippie wearing a potato sack versus a warrior wearing armor. And it wasn't even close. I could easily spend an entire episode having nothing but giants pound down on everything in the game, but I really want to try out some of these other things that I've unlocked. Like the wheelbarrow dragon. How does this work? I'm honestly afraid to ask. It looks like he got rid of the dummies he was wheelbarrowing around and replaced it with a thousand dollar fire breathing dragon. Uh, why don't we have them face off against a bunch of hay balers, right? Being surrounded by dry hay won't be a disadvantage against a fire-breathing army, would it? <laughs> yup, that's exactly what it was. So it's just a strictly better version of the dragon, right? It costs $600 more, so that makes sense, but it's way faster. And the dragon seems kind of weak. I guess in all reality, when the dragon dies, you do get four random little hole girls that can fight, but something tells me that's not gonna make a big difference when they get torched instantly. <laughs> all right, you know what? I like this version of the wheelbarrow. Most of you guys might remember that last episode, I was having a lot of trouble finding a counter to the Firework Archer, because it seems like the most grossly overpowered unit in the game. Like, not only can it kill units from a distance with the impact from its arrows, but if that unit doesn't die, then it's just gonna spin around off the map or further away from the Firework and then explode, taking out a bunch of friendly units. <laughs> So you can't use shields, you can't use melee units, you can't use fast units. Maybe we can use fan bearers? I've been waiting for them to introduce some kind of anti-projectile units and I can't imagine what else they do, right? That isn't it. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. Really? All you guys do is blow units over? 
Oh, you guys suck. So hold on a second. If I have them face off against a bunch of halflings, they're just gonna keep blowing them away. Oh, that's not nearly as useful. It's kind of cool though because you could technically use this to keep melee units away from your ranged units, right? There's no way that they can close the distance. If you keep your rank behind them, then you're in the clear. I don't think they can kill anything. <laughs> so they're probably just gonna be blowing around a bunch of halflings until they get tired, but I guess they serve some kind of purpose. Man, that's disappointing. I wanted to see them deflect a bunch of arrows. It's all fun and games having giants punch each other in the nuts and wheelbarrows spitting fire and stuff like that, but how about a bit of a simpler battle with a teacher versus a monk? Very similarly priced, but I'm curious what exactly the teacher does other than get his ass handed to him. Dude, you're getting beaten down. You're not teaching him anything. Oh, you got kicked while you're down. Um, you're not looking all that special. What does he do? Oh. Interesting. So, did you just teach him overconfidence? Patience? I'm confused. I paid attention through that whole lesson and just walked away with nothing. So how about we try a little bonus tutorial with teacher versus teacher. What exactly do you guys do? You stare at each other, you smell each other, you one shot each other. Do they just have an instant death blow? Such a weird unit. Units don't usually go sword on sword with one another. Like there is no blocking in this game. Maybe that's what he's doing. Like, yeah, that's exactly it. He's good against blade wielders. He can deflect melee blows and then death strike. That's really interesting. He's probably a sword play teacher, not a math teacher. I don't know why I get these certain trains of thought in my head and then just can't get off them when something is super obvious. <laughs> but the only unit we have left now is the cheerleader. So I guess we're just gonna put down a cheer squad, have them face off against another cheer squad. Um, Am I supposed to be judging this right now because well, you're all bald and kind of creepy. This isn't going anywhere right now. <laughs> they're not fighting, are they? They're, oh, oh, they're kind of fighting. They're, they're dropping dead. Are they cheering themselves into cardiac arrest? What's happening right now? They're definitely not contacting one another. <laughs> I don't get it. So it took a little bit of experimenting and a whole lot of dead cheerleaders, but I finally figured out that they don't act like regular units. They act like the priest, except instead of healing a unit, they superpower it, they cheer it on, they hype it up. So now we can have a hyped up semi-automatic ballista. I am gonna be using the cheerleaders so often. They cost a thousand, they're by no means cheap, and I think they cheer themselves into death, but that's still amazing. Like, I, I can only imagine the other things we can supercharge. Like, what if we superpowered a Huacha? Because they reload now, right? So wouldn't it just be a constant stream of arrows? <laughs> oh my god, this puts Artemis to shame. Look at all the arrows! <laughs> it's gonna crash my game! Oh yeah, we're in Microsoft PowerPoint territory now. I can't do anything about this. Those shields are really doing their job. Um, I think I gotta end it. I gotta call it. I got. I gotta call it. We're, we're gonna lose something. There we go. Oh, and just a vinegar stroke to end things off. But you know what? I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And it's like I said, I'm really impressed with the variety of units that they're adding to the game now. You know, no two unit really feels the same. They all serve their own purpose, and their updates are just so frequent and so big that I really can't help but be excited to play more. So as always, if you guys wanna see more, be sure to leave some comments with some recommendations, leave a like on the video, and I'll return for more soon. And thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.